Hello everybody, um, welcome to Mama Magic Live. My name is Warren Murray, I am the brand director here at Mama Magic. So welcome if you've just joined us and uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, looking forward to another uh, insightful Mama Magic Live uh, today. We've got, a, some, we've got a really great guest who's gonna be speaking to us today. Um, so as all of you start to join this live, um, please do share it with your friends and with your followers. Hello Tiny, nice to see you. Um, if you want to catch up on myself, I am Warren FM um, on Instagram. I'm a father of two. I'm the brand director here at Mom Magic. So if at any point uh, during this live, because it is a parents in live, you see kids, um, you hear them, um, you hear them in the background, it's all okay. It's all forgiven. Uh, we, some of us are still working from home. And, uh, we are at home and we are uh, broadcasting to you from, uh, from, from home. So we're really excited. I see that our guest is online. I'll be uh, getting her to join us shortly. Um, but if you don't know, then uh, please be sure to follow Mama Magic SA um, all the time. Um, we've got some great, interesting lives. They'll constantly help you in your parenting journey. Parenting during the pandemic is never easy, and we want to make sure that we can help you as much as possible um, during this time. I see Victoria's in there. So hi, Vicky. Nice to see you. Uh, Peekaboo has joined us. So great to see you guys. Uh, thanks, Tiny. Um, thanks. I know you are following me, so that's really great. Um, but be sure to share your parenting journeys with us all the time. Um, use the hashtag Mama Magic, and we'd love to get to know what you're up to during this time. This uh, today's uh, Instagram live um, is with a with a phenomenal woman. Um, you, I, I'm really keen just to chat up. I've been trying to get hold of her for a few uh, weeks now, actually. Um, but she is none other than Romy Levy. She's a doctor. Um, she is a mother of six. Um, she is a business owner and they run a phenomenal business, which I'm a great fan of. Um, I got to meet her and her husband, uh, Evan, who are exhibitors of the Mama Magic brand. They put together the So Pure brand. So join us um, from, the, from the handle, so, the So Pure Lab. Um, this is Romy Levy. Who I'm not sure what's happening um, at this time of the day in a household where there are six children. Um, I know it's pretty chaotic for myself, but Romy, how are you? I was. I'm so glad to see you. It's been a very long time. We haven't really connected. Excellent. I haven't seen you at the exhibition, obviously, because there hasn't been one yet. Um, but you are looking really great. How's lockdown Wait. treating you? I don't know. How's the double chin? That's, that's, that's what I can share with you after six kids. <laughs> I've, I've got a double chin um, and I've got long hair and that's just lockdown. That's got nothing to do with having so many children. I've never seen your hair so long. I have to be honest. You could rival Evan oh, well, at this. I hope this. you like it. I do. I love it. I love I everything hope... about you. I always have. So, um, Romy, it's, I'm glad that you tuned in. So thank you so much for uh, making time for us today. I know that you've got a very busy schedule. Um, but for those of you who don't know you, um, just tell us about who you are. Um, I've, you've, got a, you've got a really interesting bio. Um, and just tell us a little bit about so they can get to know who Romy is. Yeah, so basically, thank you, first of all, for thinking of me. We've had many years together at the Baby Expo. I, I, always, uh, I always catch you running away from me when I'm coming to ask for new passes or more passes, you know. So <laughs> um, we've got a long, I think, a long standing relationship, even though we don't know much about each other. So here goes. I, I suppose um, a 36 year old. Um, I'm a doctor of homeopathy. Um, I qualified in, um, in South Africa, even though I didn't grow up in South Africa. Um, was raised by a, a single mom. My dad, unfortunately, passed away at three and my sister was six months old. Wow. And in a pre um, sort of ending of apartheid era, my mom decided South Africa was not a place to raise two little girls. So she hightailed her, herself and us to San Diego, where we grew up. Um, so that's where the, the American intonation comes from every once in a while, our rolling R's. Um, same, in fact, my sister says she's having a terrible time there. My mom and my sister still live in California, and at the moment it's really, really heavy what they're going through. So just a, a little bit of a, you know, a heartfelt out to, to everyone on that side of the world. Uh, but basically, I was a very wayward teenager, and I found my way back to South Africa on a vacation at... Uh, 21 years old where I met Evan and because I'd done all everything naughty that I needed to do I was ready to get married so we got engaged and got married after six weeks of knowing each other and that's where wow. it kind of began yeah wow is right <laughs> um in fact the building that we're sitting in right now 
Ev and I lived upstairs in the apartment in observatory in Johannesburg. And this will be the first time in 17 years that we're fully getting ready to move ourselves completely out of this building of having lived here and developed the business here. Um, and I wow. think the, bu the business has been part of my journey ever since I met Kevin. He started it the year before we met. And um, I, because of all of my naughtiness, I didn't, I didn't matriculate in America. So when Ab and I got married, he asked me what I wanted to do. And I said I wanted to be a doctor. There we go. Sorry. Um, I said I would wanted to be a doctor and found, and found homeopathy. Are we there? Are we connected? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yes, cool. Yeah. So I found homeopathy. My, mother was, my mother's a hippie. She was a vegetarian. She raised us barefoot on the beaches of San Diego. So I kind of had no choice but to go into this world of pathology and diagnostics and primary health care and at the same time have an arsenal of natural uh, medical interventions at my fingertips. Um, I'm by no means a, um, a natural only advocate. I definitely do think that med um, medicine is holistic. There's <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's, so a little bit about who I am is that I am a vegetarian, mom of six, wife, entrepreneur, passionate about entrepreneurship. Um, I did my, uh, my, my degree at UJ. I ended up with two degrees and then I also ended up with a, with a specialty in, in functional medicine, which became my passion, and then closed the practice after the birth of my fifth child. Wow. So to come in and do the business with Evan 24-7. <laughs> so I see you here from another entrepreneur, just uh, from uh, Victoria Massey, just saying, what a legend. I mean, uh, she holds her own right in, in the entrepreneur She's a business. legend. Um, so, so that's really, really great. You know, I, the one thing I, I, I love about the Sopio brand in particular, ever since I've got to meet Evan or so many years ago when we started with the Expos, um, was just the, the natural approach that it's, take, that it's taken. But the, I think what a lot of people maybe don't realize, and I think we found this in my life in, in our own parenting journey, is just yeah. the, uh, the need to, to try homeopathy in, in many ways and incorporate that within our lives. Um, I think yeah. we, we overlook it sometimes, we don't understand it maybe. Um, but I mean, as, as a mom of six and, and, and as a doctor in this field, what kind of benefits does it bring to, to a family? So I think the current situation that we find ourselves in is exactly the, it, it highlights the need for tools. And what I feel very blessed in my journey as a mom and as a homeopath is I was given I, I was given the opportunity to fill my bag with tools. And one of those tools are the natural cleaning products. Another tool is the homeopathy, the herbalism, the essential oils, the natural approach to medicine. And I think where people get it, I don't want to say wrong, because in, no in no way do I mean to be judgmental, but I think where people could maybe perhaps improve is in trying a natural approach first. And yeah. when the natural approach ceases to offer any kind of benefit or results, then you can go for, you know, for, the, for the, harder, the harder stuff, the cortisones, the antibiotics, the injuries, the, you know, the, the more severe interventions in order, again, also to bring about a, a holistic cure. Um, you know, I think we glean inspiration from wherever we can. Uh, something I learned very early on in my journey is that there are, there, there are people in your life that you may, that, that I may not like or I may not have uh, um, you know, a connection with, but it doesn't mean that I, I, I can't learn from them. And I've learned from all types. I mean, my staff, for instance, are guys that come from really, really, really different um, and varied backgrounds, and I learn from them every day. Evan is my yeah. mentor. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Castle, who treated my kids over the years, and, and he's just since retired. But he, I, I, how much I learned from him, and um, Dr. Jackie Schultz, who is an unbelievable homeopath, um, you know, her, I had an opportunity to work under her um, before I went into my own practice. Even though we're not friends, I have so much respect for her as a practitioner and what she was able to teach me of functional medicine. Um, my mom, the strong woman in my life, um, yeah. have given me tools. And I don't know if I've completely digressed from your question, <laughs> um, but, but what I'm trying to, to illustrate is that 
homeopathy and holistic treatment of one's life incorporates everything from diet to medicines to cleaning products to the clothing we wear to the time we spend outside to the time we spend together connecting and that's kind of the way Av and I synergistically raise our children. We're major outdoorsy people. We camp. People think are nuts. They're like Jews camping. What are you on about? <laughs> but I promise you now, Evan's got more camping equipment than a lot of my Afrikaans friends' husbands, and um, it's something we really, we really enjoy. Is just kind of um, taking from life the best that it has to give and utilizing it to give the best to to those around us. You, you, you're, you're speaking so much, and I love what you're saying. Just about it's a, a holistic approach. It's not to, there's not just one given answer to anything. And I love the fact. Yeah. That, I mean, I understood your answer in terms of you draw inspiration and you find ways around it from everything around you and from every body around you. Yeah. There, there is, it's, uh, I saw something that my sister put up um, recently, and she was just talking about attitude. And I was like, I, that morning when I, after reading her post, I was like, oh, that's great. You know, it's really about readjusting my attitude towards scenarios and lifestyle and all the situations that we go through. So sometimes we've got to draw the inspiration from everywhere and use everywhere. that to our advantage to, to move forward. Now, before we kind of delve more into homeopathy, I think we've got a lot of questions that we had gotten before this live was started. When okay. people like, what? You're a mom of six children? And I mean, the, the, the span um, of uh, your kids are what, 12 months to six years old. And 12, I when I no, 12 years old to six months old. There we go, sorry. And I remember when I saw you- um, I can't all the time, well, sorry. <laughs> I saw you in Durban, and you're, you're like, I'm expecting my sixth child. And I, and I looked at you and I, I remember having a conversation with you saying, I'm in absolute awe of you. And what's that like? Because I think as a parent, I mean, when you've got one child and we've got two, we find it so difficult and challenging for you. But in that, in that day, when you answered my question, you said that you kind of just adjust and it grows and you actually said it becomes easier. I'll never forget that. You said to me, having six children actually, it actually gets easier. I think you said after like three or four. Yeah. And I, I said to go for the how I'm still waiting to hear your good news. <laughs> How do, how do you find the balance in what you do? Uh, I think I find the balance in not actually having balance at all, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think I continually try to achieve balance and I, I suffer terribly with guilt, with mommy guilt, um, whether it's Jewish mommy or Greek mommy or whatever mommy it is. I think we all suffer with, with guilt. I think dads do as well. Um, I spend yeah. a tremendous amount of time on work. Um, I, can't, I have a very hard time switching off. Um, so for us as a family, um, the Sabbath is, is, is our mainstay. We switch off our phones, uh, you know, on a, on a Friday afternoon at sunset, and they don't come back on until sometimes Sunday late morning. And I think that family connectivity, that spiritual connection to whether you want to call it the universe or God or whatever it is for, for, for those out there, um, I think that connection to, 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 to spirituality, drawing that down and bringing that aspect into our lives and cutting the world out for 24 hours is very, very important for, 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 for back. So, so weekly, I have, a sh I have shut off time with just the family and Evan and I are not allowed to speak about work. And our kids call us on it. In fact, I think they're going to put one of those, you know, like mo some, some families have a swearing jar. I need one of those yeah. too. Vicky told me to watch my mouth. <laughs> so I think we, we, have a, we have a jar at home where we've got to put money in the jar if we talk about work because it can become so overwhelming, um, you know, and especially because it is my passion and I really enjoy it. Um, it it's hard to, to find that balance. But the kids are unbelievable. They really are. I mean, they, they work really well with each other. Look, they do throw tantrums and they are naughty. And the truth, I was very, very hard on my 12-year-old and my nine-year-old. Yeah. I was a very, very stern parent. Look, I grew up with a, with a, a single mom. And for a long time, she, you know, she, she was a widow. She, 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 she coped the best she could. And she was, she was stout with us. You know, she didn't, she didn't mess around. And I took that into my own life. And what I realized is that that created the reality for the subsequent children. That gave the subsequent wow the example and my 12 year old and my nine year old and i know all mommies love their kids and all mommies kids are special and clever 
but the people that they are becoming, which I don't attribute to me or my husband, the people they are becoming is phenomenal. And they yeah. set the example for the little ones. That's awesome. Uh, if you've just joined us, uh, we're talking to uh, Romy Levy, um, who's the face behind the So Pure brand. <laughs> and we're talking just about homeopathy. We're talking about life. We're talking about having six children. Um, and we're talking about what life is like during this time. So if you've got any questions, please uh, put them in our feed right now. We'll be happy to chat them through. Um, Romy, I, I, I love what you're saying because I think also what's the point, what we found even during lockdown is that ability to shut down. Um, you know, we, we had a, you know, we were kind of just making time for each other and that kind of stuff. But what lockdown did for my family in particular was we yeah. set like new routines and new rituals um, for ourselves. And I, and I love that idea of, you know, just sitting down and, and switching off from the world. You know, every single night, doesn't matter what the day looks like, we have to sit around the table and we have yeah. supper together and there's no TV on, there's no phones allowed at the table. Um, my kids call me out on it all the time. And Amazing. It's about just those, those, mo those small moments. But I think it's that what makes life so special. And I think those are the opportunities that as parents, we can't take for granted because it doesn't matter how chaotic the world might be outside. What we have in front of us and before us is so important. I love what you're saying, even just about how you've molded the older kids, you know, and they set the example for the younger kids. And you're starting to see the fruit um, of your labor, you know, for lack of better expression. But you've seen that fruit come through. As a mother of six, what's kind of like, what are those, those what's those core values that you kind of say to your kids, hell or high water, this is what you, I will instill inside of you. What's, what's deal your breaker. heart to instill into your kids? Yeah. Yeah. So we call them deal breakers. And the deal breakers, yeah. Honesty above everything. If you can't tell the yeah, truth, if you tell yourself a story in your head that you believe that isn't in, that isn't a reality, that's that's got to go. Honesty is number one. And then I say awesome. kindness. It was a hard lesson that I learned, and I see my twelve-year-old's exactly like me, and I cringe, I cringe, I cringe sometimes because she's taken the good parts of me, but she's also taken the not so good parts, and the and and, and that um, I used to have a, a serious issue that I had to be right. No matter what it was, yeah. I was justified and I was right and I would always be right and I would make that point known no matter who I had to destroy in the process. And so what become a precept for me to instill in my children is kindness and righteousness. Sure. That is that huge. So if you can be truthful to yourself first and then to the rest of the world and you can be kind over being right, you've got a winning combination. And then other stuff as well, I'm saying like a okay, with the outdoors and the respect for nature, the respect for oneself and the respect for one's body, um, you know, um, modesty and humility. Um, also, our precepts that are very, very close to heart. And I've learned the lesson. Um, I've learned the hard lessons myself. And my goal is to prevent my children from having to learn those lessons in such a hard way. Yes, learn the lessons, but in a bit of an easier way than I did or I allowed myself, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I, I think that I think that's that that's brilliant. Um, I'm looking at some of the comments here. Um, Stacy Bloggs uh, is saying she just she's she she's so for she loved the incredible opportunity to get to know and she hasn't tried so pure yet, but she'd like to do that in the future. And she said, but what she finds so inspiring um, is just being able to see the face behind the brand. So obviously, she's picking up just on your passion um, for that. And then later on, she also says um, that she has three kids that she finds it difficult to find time to breathe but i think in terms of what you're saying is that we've got to take those small moments um to, and we've got to force ourselves to switch off we've got to force ourselves to engage with our kids i think sometimes we can get very wrapped up in the world we can get very wrapped up in the news um and what's going on around us but we are not finding those moments of uh, forcing ourselves to have those moments with our families um, 100 well that's so what i think, think what done sorry to interrupt but i think that's what corona's done is it's taken a chaotic world. It's taken a world that couldn't sustain itself anymore in, a, in chaos. Said, right, now we all stop. And we, let's see what comes out of it. This new world order of sorts, this new way of existing and making better choices. And I think, well, I think it's also the extreme ownership of I have choice. I have the ability mm -hmm. to make life what I want it to be. I don't have to, to do what wasn't working before. Ah, 
What are the questions that I need to ask myself in order to stimulate the ideas of what I could be doing better? Yeah, um, I think, I, yeah, I think you, you hit, it, hit the nail on the head because we have to reassess our lives. Our lives will never go back to the normal that we knew. We've got to stimulate and create those new normals. And, you know, even, even when I say like when we have dinner at the table, it's sometimes it's hard um, because it's been a, a tiding day. I don't have to set the table and put placemats out and all these kind of things. You know, it'd be so much easier if we could just sit in front of the TV um, or, you know, just kind of have a more informal dinner would be great. But we have, we force ourselves to do that and we force ourselves yeah. to, to stick to it because it's a commitment that we made. And I've seen the difference that it makes to the kids. Um, you know, even just when we say, oh, we're going to go walk in in the morning and get them out of these four walls and just, you know, let them see the neighborhood a little bit. Um, yeah. We see that that commitment and that time together, it doesn't matter how small or how long that time is, but it's something that they just, they, they treasure so much and they look forward to because yeah. they know in those moments, whether we're on the trampoline, whatever we're doing, that they've got our undivided attention. And I think you get to learn a little bit about the kids a little bit more and a little bit deeper. Um, are you homeschooling at the moment? And if so, what's that like? <laughs> so again, um, if I'm going to be very honest, I've, I've completely and totally neglected my kids in these last three months. And it's been very painful. Um, is that we were essential services from the beginning. We were blessed with that opportunity. We've been working 17 years towards it. But the truth of the matter is that the poop, see Vicky, I watched my mouth, the poop really hit the fan when, when this corona crazy, when this corona coaster started. So what happened for Avon is we were spending 18 hours, 15 to 18 hours a day. And my, my assistant, Romy, I might add, we've got a Romy. We've got another Romy, Romy with an I. Anybody ever has, uh, has the opportunity to deal with her in the office. But um, is that we were spending 15 to 18 hours a day in the factory. I uh, left in the morning when the baby was three months old and I didn't see her the entire day. First time that my, my new nanny, because uh, we lost, uh, our nanny left us after eight years. So we started a new nanny. And I was leaving her with my three-month-old baby. I stopped breastfeeding. She was the baby that I breastfed the least. My heart was broken. I was shattered. And you know what I knew I had to do? Was to get up every single day and do those 15 hours and do those 18 hours a day because this is what we've been working for. This is our time to shine, mm. to give South Africa and the rest of the world what we've been passionate about so long. And my kids sacrificed because of it. And my heart broke and Evan's heart broke. And we cried and we laughed and we celebrated. We we, 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 uh, we mourned and um, it really was an incredibly, I call it, I say it's Beyonce, it's a beautiful nightmare. It was the, it yeah. was the worst blessing I'd ever received in my life. So as far as the homeschooling is concerned, my 12-year-old really has jacked herself up. She's got the Zoom calls on different devices in different rooms. And as long as I print the packs or my Romy with an eye prints the packs and we get the packs home, then she can function. But I see also in her little world, She's trying to manage her life and she is struggling in her own self because she's become mommy. She's become teacher. Oh, she's Romy, be you've just, I've lost you there for a second to you back. Okay. Well, I don't know where you, I don't know where we left off. I, I we just, you said you, she was able to function in her little world. She was trying to function in her little world while trying to balance her youngest. Wow. Yeah, call, incoming call. So she, for the first time I saw was the oldest child in a big family and exactly what I didn't want from her. I didn't want wow. for her to, have to take care of mommy's children because they weren't her responsibility. And I get emotional when I think about it because it's still carrying on. She's still yeah. carrying the burden because here I am at, you know, 522 in the afternoon, um, you know, passionately bringing this brand to, to the fore and, at the same time, also being able to pay for their school fees. <laughs> I, I, think <laughs> I, I think I must applaud your honesty, though, um, because I think it's, it's, it's hard to, to be honest as a parent. Whether you're mom or dad, that guilt can, can really be taxing on you. I mean, I, I've seen it in, in my yeah. own world, and today is one of those examples where I've left my office to, um, at home just to grab a cup of coffee and maybe get to the toilet between my meetings. Um, yeah. And, you know, be, just before this live, my son was like, Dad, when are we going to? And I was like, as soon as I finish this last video, I promise I'll do that. And I know that it's dinner time and I'll have to sit down and do that. And when they go yeah. back to sleep, I'll have to catch up again. But 
that that guilt really tugs at your heart and and I applaud you for your honesty I, but you know I I think at the same time I understand where you're coming from because besides your own family you are putting your your own family first but you're thinking actually of the entire nation that you're trying to service and and, and provide a solution to because I think as so uh, you you've got this opportunity like you said to build this brand and to be able to to help people now when they need it the most. So maybe just for those who don't know what so pure is if they've just joined us now, give them just a bit of a a quick update in terms of what so pure is and 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 what you've been so busy with then during lockdown and is helping us as essential service. So basically so pure began about 17 years ago in this very room. Um this was the uh, factory um has expanded itself to the whole bottom of this building and please god we'll be moving within the next couple of weeks or so we've uh, warranted moving into a awesome. bigger factory but what happened is evan evan also suffered his own tragedies he lost three quarters of his family his primary family is dead and brother by the time he was 25 so he his father was sick in hospital for many years and he always had no way of hygiene and sanitizing and um, cleanliness and hence the name germaphobe um the the company cc is actually germaphobe and 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 the four and the 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 hand site that I don't I, I think in in naming the company that name he could have never imagined but anyway we call it a little bit of a a nevoa they say here a bit of a prophecy yeah. so we started with the um uh you know with the with the 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 hand sanitizers the the mosquito spray which everybody knows the vanilla and because he had met my mom and seen sort of the the way the natural lifestyle going all over the world and South Africa wasn't privy to that South Africa didn't have um is do I need a charger um South Africa didn't have the the options that the rest of the world had at their fingertips and began to innovate um he also is a CA he couldn't get a, a job after 9/11 so he sold harsh cleaning, cleaning chemicals in London um which made him sick and it was another it was another sorry I'm just plugging in here it was another oh, sure. um it was another progenitor of the Sophia brand so it was this desire for natural cleaning this this need to do something different um sustainable for the earth um you know hypoallergenic and and all those buzzwords for for one's for one's household cleaning and and what one puts on their body um which became this sort of beautiful animal of um the hand sanitizers which i can go into the technology our hand sanitizers are so fantastic and they're non alcohol and they're so we're so proud that they're non alcohol because they're this electrochemicalized water that is so effective against so many viruses and bacteria and it's sustainable mommies can be proud to wash put this on their kids hands and spray it on their kids faces and just get involved with it especially in this corona time it's a relevant product um yeah you know so so everything of what we ever wanted to do was to bring south africa the best most natural and effective because a lot of cleaning ranges that are natural don't necessarily work they don't have enough soap in them or they don't have enough um you know of the odor eliminators or they don't whatever so the idea was 95 to 98% natural plant based and highly effective cleaning products um our disinfectants are registered in germany as effective against corona and other other stuff so before corona even came along um the 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 idea was to give south africa and then eventually the rest of the world something better something more and something sustainable so each product is deeply is deeply personal so the body wash my 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 for example my 9 year old my dovi he had the purative bleeding eczema on his on his um you know on his elbows and on his and the backs of his legs and we were at this one and we were at that one and it was this homeopathic remedy and it was that natural remedy and yeah evan said you know what it's in the soap it's the soap so he made the body wash wow. the laundry the laundry liquids the Love that. Love that. The, the 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 laundry the laundry liquids are the 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 best of what we should be using because our skin is porous and our laundry liquid is on our skin all day long the dishwashing liquid that we don't rinse out of our cup properly not because of our fault but because of all the soaps in it the next time we make ourselves that cup of tea we're drinking a little bit of dishwashing liquid and then we're asking ourselves the questions why do we all have ibs why do we all have dysbiosis in our guts it's because wow. of the ingestion of chemicals it's the chemicals in our lives 
So as part of that holistic approach, one wants to embrace using these kinds of products, whether it's ours or it's Woolworths or it's another brand, I don't mind, whatever, it, whatever the case, but we are the best. But I'm saying look, when we're talking about a zero lifestyle, a zero waste lifestyle, I always tell people, don't go zero waste, go less waste. Don't go zero chemical, go less chemical until you can get to that point whereby, sorry, we're having a, um, that's okay. Um, whereby, whereby one's life is enhanced again by the choices we make. Yeah. Um, that's, and that's so pure, well. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I, I've come to know the brand from the hand sanitizer. I'll never forget the small ones that Evan used to give us as um, that we used to carry around with us because, you know, at the exhibitions, you'd walk around so much, meet so many different people, but coming to conference with so many different kids that, that become yeah. a, became an essential part for us to constantly keep our hands clean. Um, and we yeah. always kind of just like attach it to us. It came in a little bottle like that. Um, and we, we used to love it from back then. And the range has developed so much since then. And what I've, what I've loved is not only the development of it, but I think just seeing it in, in more and more retailers to see it being used yeah. by more and more places. I think, you know, personally, it's been, a, it's been a proud moment because I've watched this brand grow. And I remember just Evan, just um, his passion for it was just like incredible. And then I remember at some point he's like, okay, I'm handing the business over to Romy and she's going to be a point of contact. And I was like, you can't. What does she know about this? And then this woman jumps on board and takes the business to a whole nother level. Um, and oh, I shame. Think it's, it's, it's been incredible to see the growth of the brand, but I think also the fact that you are proudly South African products. Um, you know, again, it's just in times like this that you want to support local businesses. But yeah. like you're saying, these are, these are products that are so good and helpful for our own families in our daily use. Um, and the truth is, like you said, we don't always know what we put in, into our bodies and how we put it into our bodies. Um, yeah. What you, how how is the brand going to expand in the next few months, in the next few years? What do you what what exciting things can we look forward to? So I've strategically placed myself in front of our new stand. Walk, can you see it? I see it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the first sneak peek that anybody in the country has seen. We are coming out with beautiful new branding. It's an interim brand, so you can keep uh, keep an eye on it for the next. Uh, year or so until we really hit the market with just some phenomenal eco-friendly, more eco-friendly packaging. Our bottles are done for us by the local guys, the, the Rivetti brothers at T3 Plastics. Um, our bottles are um, recyclable and recycled plastic. Um, we have, we've, we've gone and we've moved away from the silver, which was less eco-friendly. Um, the, the, the foil labels aren't, uh, don't allow for, um, for as recyclable a product. Um, we've also um, joined forces a while ago with the refillery, the guys at the refillery, Dom and Sam are unbelievable. Um, so just also making the product more widely available in bulk. Um, I'll give you a little, a little sneak preview. There's what the brand, oh, sorry, what the brand did look like and what it will look like. So this is our fruit and veg sterilizing fluid, which you can find um, on our website or at Discam. Um, so we're getting there. That's not even available yet, but it will be in, available within the next month. And our stands, there's Ev. Just say hi quickly. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, I'm going to pause you there. Just, okay. just I mean, th these pr uh, a product like that you've just shown us now in terms of being able to clean our fruits and vegetables when they yes. come in. Just, I mean, it's, it's become so important now because of coronavirus. But yeah. it's always been important because we were kind always. of, we'll, we'll wash our fruit, um, we'll rinse it, but we don't actually clean in anything off it and yeah. we're not actually getting the clean. Just to explain the importance of being able to use a product like that. So the fruit and veg sterilizing um, fluid has been available for, I think, 10 years. That's how important it is. It was a product that we put out there that wasn't re well received because people didn't understand it. But in the UK and in, in, in America and in Israel, people have been using fruit and veg sterilizing fluids for a long time. What's special about ours is, again, it's this ECA. So I'm just going to show you here because the, the followers can look out for this little brand. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys now are coming out with these tunnels and these fogging machines. And what's the product that's going into it? It's our hand sanitizer. It's not <laughs> ma manufactured by us, but it's the ECA that we've been peddling and we've been spraying your hands for the last 12 years, for the last 14 wow. years. 
So wow. I get a couple of really clued up mommies who do read labels and they do say, oh, but we see that your fruit and veg sterilizing fluid and your dummy sterilizer and your hand sanitizer are all the same product. What's the deal? Are you trying to hoodwink us? And we say, no, we're not. Actually, we, uh, all, the, all these years ago when Evan found the EC, the hypochlorous acid, which it sounds big and bad, but it's actually the gentle cousin of chlorine. So with all the killing, ben all the pathogenic benefits, but without the harsh side effects. So the market wasn't ready for a thousand and one uses product. And if you look, I don't have it now, but the, the sterilizing, the one surface disinfectant that we have is also the ECA. It's a potent disinfectant and it can be used in your mouth. It can be used on your hands. Oh, don't say in your mouth because it's not registered with the Medical Control Council. So no, 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 no. But you can spray it on, you can spray it on baby's dummy and you put dummy straight into baby's mouth. We've also got a cheeky product on the market. That's, a, that's also the, um, I'll let you guys research it. I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but it's, um, it's an adult toy disinfectant. Okay, let's just put it out there. But what I'm saying about this product is it's so versatile. It's so sustainable. And the disinfecting properties are incredible. I what think is for me, so, the, yeah? the, 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 dummy, the dummy sterilizer was amazing because, you know, as a parent, when that dummy falls out the mouth, pacifier falls out the mouth, the first thing you kind of do is like, you look at it first, I think as a new parent and you're like, what do I do with this? And you'll rinse yeah, it and you'll hundred percent. And, and then as your kids get older, yeah, in your mouth, out your mouth. My mother, I was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> so you absolutely saved my life. And I was like, I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so glad. So that, that product specifically was Evan's brainchild. He came up with that product again, because we had a, a little baby whose dummy was falling out of her mouth. And what were we going to do to clean it? And we found this, he found this application of this hypochlorous acid as a, because it's a surface sterilizer, but it's also able to be sprayed on and in the mucous membranes of the body. It was the perfect application for this product. And there was nothing like it on the market. So what had happened is, is it, it was widely, it was unbelievably received because it offered a solution like you, to so many parents who didn't really know what to do. So then you get the guys saying, oh, but come on, what do you have to spray a dummy for? Kids need dirt. Yes, they do need dirt. They need earthworms dirt. They don't need poop and wee and chewing gum shoe dirt in a shopping center. Mm. So that's what the dummy sterilizer was there for. Yeah. I'm looking at some Is of it was comments. able to provide... Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at some of these comments. Um, Stacey Blogs again says, uh, definitely support local... So Shada says, I uh, love the soap your products and, and happy that we got our hand sanitizers. Uh, Maritza is obviously sending her love, uh, love eyes. So tell Evan, uh, Maritza still says hi. Um, mommy, like, <laughs> by comment, um, says, can't wait to try it. Um, and then Stacey Blogs again, um, just talking about, okay, wow, love that product. It's so important for me to find a product that I can use as a disinfectant for food repurchase. Because I think, again, um, it's becoming yeah. so important in this day and age. Um, and I think what's, what's brilliant yeah. about what you guys are saying is that the products that you've created are very practical. They are, I think, yeah. the fact that you are both parents and you're so passionate about what you do makes it makes your products even more more practical for us as parents because they are safe for, for kids use they're safe for pregnant women you know there, there's nothing in there that's gonna that's gonna harm our families and i think you've thought about all those things that us as parents kind of are trusting brands to think of yeah. and to take care of and sometimes yeah. we don't we don't look deeper into the label sometimes we just kind of say oh that looks cool but you know i think part of why we're doing this chat is to say like there are products out there that are proudly South African that are, that are brought to you by parents themselves that have thought about everything and these are safe for you without realizing yeah. that these are absolutely safe for you and your baby because those are actually hard to find on shelf these yeah. days. Like. 100%. So what, what, I, what I refer to our brand and our product as our mindful products, I actually say they've kind of got a thought process and they're working with mom and dad to be able to make life easier, to be able to make life more pleasant and more tolerable. You know, yeah. um, uh, oftentimes we pick up a we can pick up a product in a in a store and just trust that the store's done the due diligence for us. And the truth is that that can be very very dangerous because not all labels are created equal. So I can definitively say from my little ha horse is what we have done is we've created a brand with the utmost integrity. That if you if you if you look at our label, you'll see a thousand ingredients. And people say, well, how can it be natural if it's got so many ingredients? Well. 
you want it to work, don't you? It needs a lot of ingredients, but those re ingredients are all natural. And these are what they are. And so that's why also the rebranding exercise is quite cool because we put in stuff, we put in um, some lay terms instead of the big, long scientific names. Um, like, uh, what did we do? Calcium, our copyright is so amazing. Um, Des, um, from, uh, from, from, fr she was from what was Rhodesia. So we, we, we always joke that she's the, she's, the, she's the Brit that still remains in Rhodesia in her mind. Anyway, so she, 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 she said to us, well, why are you putting calcium carbonate? It's chalk. Tell moms that it's chalk. <laughs> so, on, so, 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 so she's, she's, what, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say to mom, hey, this is here. It's for you. Understand that we've created it for us. So it's for you. It's the best you could possibly have because I created the best for myself. And um, so just quickly back to the fruit and veg sterilizer, why, why it was so important even pre-corona is because it degrades pesticides. And the damage of ingesting pesticides is so um, uh, rife in the, 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 the research is so clear um, as to the, the harmful effects of pesticides. That's a product you want to use because it's a mindful product. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Romy, uh, there's a question that's coming here from uh, yeah. Player Lotza. Oh, I've lost you, Wah. Indoor Play Park. Um, so th there's a comment who's asking, they've absolutely sold on the product, but they want to know how do they get in contact with you to look at doing some kind of local demonstration. They need to convince the owners of the, of the Indoor Play Park um, to yeah. have a look into this. Because again, you know, going forward, in as as more and more businesses open up and more more play centers, um, you know, re our restaurants, all these kind of things open up, and we've got to take yeah. our kids out. They've got to find ways of keeping our keeping these areas safe, sanitized, 100%. but also without provide any additional harm to our hundred percent, hundred percent. So um, we're very hands on. I mean, I've done demonstrations in people's houses for years. Um, I'm egoless in that because I really want people to. You know, I'll, I'll spread myself so thin in order to be able to go give a demonstration. Um, currently, we've got, a, we've got a bit of a team that I've trained to do that. So we can definitely offer demonstrations. What I think we also do need to do is we need to set up a bit of a YouTube channel and give a how-to on all of the products. Because all of the products from the kitchen cleaner to the toilet cleaner, which all have, are infused with essential oils for their own reasons. Like the, the toilet and the bathroom has um, the peppermint in it and the floor has orange blossom and the hand wash has this neroli and tangelo are all part of the mindfulness. So I think demonstrations are a great way for people to feel, smell and get involved with the products and understand that specifically in areas where children are growing and playing have to yeah. be more careful about number one, the cleanliness and the sustainability of this new way going forward. And number two, the naturalness of the products with which we're cleaning, because there's no use in cleaning and sanitizing and cleaning and sanitizing with alcohol based hand sanitizers. And then our child is in hospital with a secondary infection because of, uh, because of an alcohol burn, because of a chemical burn. And this is so, the reality that we're facing. And that's actually the question I've got for you. We're, we're running out of time, but I want to ask you this because okay. um, I was chatting to a practitioner earlier this last week or sometime, and they were saying that, you know, we've, in sanitizers, all the alcohol-based ones in particular, um, yeah. these, they could potentially cause a lot of harm that we are not looking for, we, we don't realize because we're not even sure what's in these sanitizers. 100%. Now, as, a, as, a, as a parent, what should we be looking for um, in terms of alcohol, or as we, rather, what should we be looking for in terms of a sanitizer that we know is safe for our skin because a lot of them can cause a lot of harm to our skin, but what should we be looking for, whether it's alcohol-based or not? That. So basically, I mean, I'm going to give you a really, an answer that's going to sound convoluted and it's going to sound, um, it's my truth, well, is the only hand sanitizer I would use for myself and my kids is the hand sanitizer that we make. Yeah. And it's this, um, it's this, you know, because the, the truth is that you've got so many people manufacturing hand sanitizers in all sorts of different ways, shapes and forms. I mean, they're using METs, the purple hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizers aren't purple for no reason, my angel. They have methanol in them. So, so we're wait, not even, just, we, we, be, we became. Uh, I, yeah. I want to ask you then. So if you're going to say the Sopia one, I mean, you don't have alcohol. So I think people need an understanding why. It's about education. Alcohol. So, yeah. so I'll explain why. So the, the truth is that 
this technology, which we're going to be making a big deal about. So follow us, listen to us. I'll give you all the reports. I'll give you as much information um, as you and the viewers and the, and the entire country um, wants and needs a, um, with regard to the hand sanitizers. Is that, again, alcohol-based hand sanitizers are, are, are less sustainable because they are harsh chemicals. So I'm talking specifically for little ones. You can't, um, you can't, you can't put um, alcohol-based hand sanitizers on kids' um, skins and expect that there's going to be no adverse effects. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers make the skin more porous. So it makes it more able to, be, um, to absorb toxins that are ordinarily in the, in, in the environment that they might not absorb ordinarily. It can definitely create chemical burns in sensitive uh, people and in people who aren't so sensitive. The more you use the more your skin actually becomes degraded and burnt. You know, that epidermal layer gets sloughed off every single time you wash and every single time you use a hand sanitizer. So it's got to be protected. Um, so yeah. basically what I can say of our product is while we haven't tested it locally on the coronavirus and this, this slew of COVID, COVID um, uh, viruses, 19 this COVID-19, we are looking towards to getting tested it, to, to getting it tested, is that the technology is not so readily available in South Africa. It has been tested by other companies in Ireland as effective against Corona. But I'm going to make the disclaimer once again, that's not our product that we manufacture, but it's the technology that manufactures our product. So what I'm trying okay. to say is that we do have choices with regard to sanitizing and it doesn't have to involve harsh chemicals. Um, our hand sanitizer, like I said, it's a hypochlorous um, base. It's got, uh, in scientific terminology, it's got more than 180 parts per million, which makes it a very serious disinfectant on contact. Even though the bottle does say use five minutes, we've complied with um, uh, standards and regulations for disinfectants. So we have had to put that on the bottle. Um, yeah, so the truth is that also, I mean, you're looking at also cognitive effects of, of, of alcohol inhalation. If you're in your car, you're looking at the, 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 the potentiality in summer of that alcohol combusting. I mean, look, again, I'm not a scientist, but I'm a mom and I've got a brain and I've yeah. been researching this stuff for years. And I'll be darned if I'm going to put alcohol hand sanitizers and sanitize my home with, um, with harsh chemicals from now going forward, because I don't want to look at what that picture looks like at the end of all of this. Absolutely. And I think, I think that's, that's so insightful. And I think you've given moms some real food for thought in terms of looking at just, you know, picking up that bottle and looking at the at labels that are on those products, um, sanitizers in particular. And I think, you know, sometimes when they don't have labels, because I've seen a lot of products starting to come out so quick and fast, they don't even have ingredients lists on them. And I think we have to be so you gotta careful be careful about all, all these products. You've got to be careful of um, that. As a parting shot, I mean, we, we've gotten to know you now. Um, I, I, I just, I was loving the stuff you were saying earlier, but as a parting shot, and very early on in the conversation, there was a mom who was saying she's, she's a mom of two new twins, um, and she, she just, she struggles to find that moment. But how do you, I mean, you, you mentioned it earlier, but what kind of advice do you have for moms out there? You, we'll, I would call you an expert parent because you've got six of your own. Your honesty earlier on was, was really just beautiful, and I think we can all relate to that. But what's your parting shot for parents out there, and, and, and particularly moms who are, who are watching this video? So I'm going to be I'm going to be heartfelt again, and I might get emotional, but it goes back to my 12-year-old daughter, Leora. She is, her name is Leora. It means my light, actually. And I didn't realize that at 20, I was 24 when I had her. I didn't realize that my, 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 my light had come to me. And I was very hard on her and I was studying at varsity. And again, never had time because I was doing this and I was doing that and whatever I was doing. And, I, and I've come to realize that that's just my personality. I am a busy working mom. I'm never going to be a stay at home mom. My sister's a stay at home mom and I, I'm in awe of her. But she can play with her kids and she can love her kids. And she doesn't always have patience, but she's got more patience than I do. And so what I've learned from the, and, and then the first two kids, and then there was four and a half years, the, the subsequent four. And then those ones are like 18 and 20 months. I mean, you should be pregnant at every single baby expert for the last five years. Um, is, is, is that just love them. Enjoy yeah. them. All the cafes on Instagram that make me feel rich, 
bad about myself as a parent and that I, that I picked up my, my, you know, those things that just make you feel terrible. Like I put my baby down one night and I picked her up and she wasn't a baby anymore. Like, okay, yes. And I'm also so grateful that my baby are growing up because if they made it through babyhood, then they can make it into adolescence and they can make it into adulthood. And that's what we want. We want yeah. them to be strong and healthy. And so my, my, my one thing that I've learned in this Corona time in this, in my business and with raising my two big kids and our four little kids is love them in the moment. And if you're able to be in that moment, be there. And if you're not, be somewhere else because it's not about the quality, quantity, it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. It's about the no. moment I snuck into the fairy garden and with my five-year-old, eyes come alive and she wears her little glasses and she's my fairy child. And then it's also about my big girl who wants to talk about... Um, you know, what's she going to bake on the weekend? And it's my, my boy who wants to talk about the spacecraft. And if I give them little moments and I hold on to those moments are more than four hours that I would have spent screaming at them and pulling their hair out and going nuts is what I've realized is that the guilt of not being there always is only that I'm not spending that quality time with them half an hour or hour that I'm I think that, uh, we, yeah, I think that's so, that's, you hit the nail in the head again. It's just, you, you say sometimes some of the most profound things that if you realize it, um, but you found your truth and in who you are, um, you know who you are and you deal with that and you parent best in knowing who you are. Um, Kim, Kim J um, also said the same thing earlier that she knows she's not a play mom, um, but I'm a better mom when I'm busy and working and, and studying. And uh, is that even normal? But the truth is, a lot yeah, of us, are, we've got to acknowledge who we are. We're honest with that. Yeah. We're not our neighbor. We are not our cousin, our sister. We parent in our own way. And we and acknowledge who we are. And we, like you say, just take those moments and just, just run with it. 100%. It's kind of like our, our kids come alive. One more thing, why, if I might, because I, because just as a, and I hope this goes out to young moms in the most ugh, real way possible, is that I used to judge so harshly. Like, thank God, I've got five, I've got six midwife births under my belt. Genesis at home at the Park Lane, you name it. I've got all of them. I've breastfed, I've bottle fed, I've medeled myself to pieces. I think I even wrote an article for Medela at one point. And my one take home at this stage of my life, where I hoid that little, my little Safira, she's six months old. I put her on a Tommy Tippy bottle with a Tommy Tippy dummy and a formula and a, and a, and a Novalac HA. And I'm telling you, you know what? She's probably my happiest child because the breastfeeding was in my head and the natural births were in my head and how I looked down on other mommies and our mom shamed. That has got to stop. We are all just doing the best that we can and as long as we love them and as long as we care for them and we do right by them because they didn't depending on what your beliefs are didn't necessarily ask to be here even though i do think that they did is if we can just love them and be there for them and love ourselves and be here for ourselves everything will come together in a magical way. i i think that is, is is so well said i think uh, we've got to really just parent for ourselves and we have to love ourselves and do the best that we can for our children, not because somebody else has told us this is the right thing to do, not because That's we the feel the pressure to, to, to breastfeed, not because we feel the pressure to do anything. We've got to do it the best that we can. I think that's, that's spoken for, for moms and for dads, um, really. And I, th yeah. I think that that's really well said. Thank you so much. It's been absolutely, you. totally insightful. Um, if you've just joined us, we were talking to Dr. Romy um, Levy from the So Pure brand. Um, she's a mom of six. She's running a local business. She's been working as an essential service worker this entire time. Um, but she's given us some really insightful uh, bits, just not about, not just about parenting, but some interesting things to go and have a look at. Um, go and listen to what she has to say. Look as uh, said about um, hand sanitizers, disinfectants, and how to just ensure that you're also just doing your best to provide the best for your family in the best way that you know how. Uh, we can't all do it the same, um, but we do the best that we can for our kids, and that's and that's what they need. Um, so right. thank you so much. Um, I know that everybody's really enjoyed it. Stacy, uh, Stacy Blogs, thanks so much for keeping in contact and communicating this entire time. Uh, thank you, Kim, Sashada. Uh, there's so many comments coming through that have come through. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. you guys can get get a hold of the Sopia brand online. Their handle is 
this so pure lab um that's the handle on this live uh, so they're here on instagram so you can chat to them there um but they're also a brand that you can find in any real uh, big retailer um all over the place and i think the more we go out and the more we engage and we get out there i think it's important that we ask the right questions that we push the retailers and we push um play centers, restaurants, as they're all open, to make sure that they are protecting ourselves and our children with the right products. So thank you yeah. so, so much. It's been, it's been beautiful. Thanks, Wa. Well, I can't wait to see you at another baby expo and run after you for those classes. <laughs> as long as you're not pregnant, it's okay. <laughs> I can definitively tell you right now, as long as it is in my power, I am good on six, my brother. <laughs> Thank you so much, Romy. It's Thank been lovely you. chatting to you. Thanks you everybody too. for joining in. Thank Don't forget this conversation. Your... Love... Will... Lots awesome. of love Thank to all of you. So much. Thank you. Bye. Yes. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.